This is the um, single screen material issue um, job receipt program. Uh, and uh, it really does several things. This program is really meant to be something that we run out on the shop floor. And its primary purpose is that you can scan a job in, you can uh, scan in all of your materials um, and what quantities and all that stuff that we need to fill in. And when you hit the single button, it's going to do all the material issues. It's going to assign serial numbers to any parts that need to be serialized. It's going to back flush any materials that are back flushed automatically. It's going to uh, back flush labor, perform job receipts, and then do a, uh, and print off some labels. So with one button, it's meant to do a lot of different stuff. Um, the end users have no idea that that much stuff's going on in the background, as you'll see here. Um, so the screen here, the first uh, area we're in is uh, it's expecting the job number. Now I'm going to actually be typing in here, but pretty much all these fields are keyed to be accepting barcodes primarily because that's how we figure most people would want to use them. Uh, you'd start off by scanning the job number, and all we need is your scanners to be configured to uh, send the enter key afterwards. That's how we'll know that we need to move to the next field. So I've got a job here, 2308, and we hit enter. And you can see when you do that, it moves down from uh, field number one down to field number two, where it's asking the quantity. So when we tell the quantity here, you may, you may have a job that's set up for, um, you know, a quantity of 100, and you may only be doing five of them now. So we need to prorate the materials that are being issued and, and all the transactions that are occurring according to that. Uh, just to show you the job that I'm working with here, this is what the job looks like. It's a fairly straightforward job. Um, I have it set to make 100. There are three operations on it. Um, each of those operations are time and quantity operations. And I've got several materials. Um, these first two materials are attached to operation 10, and they're set to backflush. Uh, this next material, uh, this is actually a lot controlled part. If you want the part maintenance, I'll show you that. But it's, uh, you know, so we'll fill in a lot number for that one. The next one is a serial controlled part, so each of these parts are serialized. And the last one is just a regular part um, where we don't have serial or lock control turned on. So, um, again, since this job was for 100, let's say we just want to do two of them. So I would either type or scan the number two, and then it would hit the enter key. And on this one, we've got it configured where it skipped past the warehouse drop dropdown. Um, obviously, any of these things are configurable for however you want them. But we have the warehouse drop down in there as if you wanted to override which warehouse that things were going to be auto issued from. But if you just want to stick with however Appleboard do it by default, then that's fine too. So we kind of save the scan there and just jump straight to item number four here. At this point, you can also see this grid filled in. And the grid is showing all those materials. You don't see the backflush parts because the end user doesn't need to do anything with those. They're already taken care of behind the scenes. But what we do see is our lot control part here. Um, and we can see here there's a quantity column and a lot number column. The serial column is grayed out. We have the serial number part. Now, um, this serial number was set up where it was a, um, a, a quantity per of one. So since we're doing two, we need to tell it two serial numbers. And since each serial number is unique, we actually have two rows represented in here for each of the different serial numbers. And the last one here for the regular part, all we have is just a quantity. You don't need to tell the lot number or serial number. Now, you can certainly go right into the grid and start typing if you want to just use the grid. But again, the idea here is I don't want somebody to have to be touching the keyboard and mouse more than they have to. So up until now, we could have theoretically just scanned everything in. The same deal here. Uh, let's say you've got a, uh, a, a part sitting there uh, on the line. And it's for that 3, 307 part ID. So I'd start by scanning the barcode for that. And again, I'm just going to type it in here since I don't have a barcode. But I'm type this in. Hit the enter key. And it automatically knows to jump to the column where we're going to pick the quantity. Now, here you might also have a barcoded value. Um, and as long as it's barcoded when you scan it in and hit the enter key afterwards, then that's just fine. Let's make this a little bit interesting, though, and say that I'm pulling this from two separate lots. So I've got two of them from lot you know, A and two of them from lot B. I obviously only have one lot number field here, so uh, to show you how we handle that, I'm going to enter two and hit the enter key. 
And what you'll see when you do that is it actually added a new row at the end because we're going to need to tell it the additional lot number for the next pump that we're putting in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put in um, a lot number that I know is good here and hit the enter key. And what it does next after the enter key is it jumps down to the next field where it's asking for the quantity there. Now, if I would, again, short the quantity here, it would just keep adding rows as long as I, as long as I needed. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it the quantity it wants here. We do have validations on these fields in real time, so if you accidentally scan something wrong, it would tell you that's an invalid lot ID. I'm going to go ahead and give it one that is real. And then after you've, you've completed a single part, it jumps the focus right back up to the material box so I can start scanning the next one again. So let's uh, run down the line here. Let's, let's just to kind of show you that you don't have to do these in order. Let's, uh, we're going to pick the, uh, that 1032, which is just a regular part with no lock control or serial number. And that just jumps to the quantity field, tells the quantity. And then we're back to the serial number. Or we're back to the part field. So let's go ahead and uh, scan in that serial number. Um, this one it bypasses the quantity field because we know the quantity is going to be one because it's serialized parts. So we don't even need to uh, tell it that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in a serial number here. And what it does after you hit the enter key there is it just jumps down to the next one. You know, uh, we, we kind of assume that when you've scanned a part, you're just going to run rock down that list and continue um, for all the other parts in this, uh, of that same uh, same part. If you didn't want to do that, you could hit that clear button up here and it'll allow you to scan a different part. But we uh, want to keep it as clean of a flow as possible here. The hit enter. Now, after you've basically fulfilled the entire grid here, you've given it all the information it needs to perform all the transactions we're going to do now. Um, you, all you really have is the option down here to, uh, to issue all, or you can clear it out and start all over if you didn't like the way this is going for some reason. So you're going to hit issue all here. And you can see a little hint down there. It happens so quick it's hard to tell, but uh, essentially we did several things on this one transaction. We issued the materials to the job. We back flushed any of the back flush parts. We backflushed the labor. We performed job receipts. If the part I would have scanned in would have been a serial track part, I also would have assigned serial numbers to that part. And last thing, and this one I'll just show you from here, is in the system monitor, um, this this would have uh, auto printed off some labels. So, and we go back in our job tracker and see our manufacturing receipt for two for the operations. We can see the labor that was back flush for each of these. For the materials, these were the, these first two were the back flush ones. So we can see those automatically got back flushed. For the part of the lot control, I see the two separate lines for the two separate lot numbers. For the serial track part, I see the entries for those. And I see the single entry for this one. So. With one button, you're essentially automating what would have taken, you know, four or five screens inside the upper core. And so this uh, screen, uh, meant to be on the shop floor, it can really be pegged wherever you want. Um, it can either be run out of the full upper core uh, menu structure, or we can uh, peg it to one of the buttons inside Mez. So it's really up to you how you want to set it up. Um, and the labels that come out are configurable. Um, it's just a standard uh, BAQ report that we're just automatically firing off. You can put your own logos on them. We actually have three separate templates. Uh, one is if the part is lot controlled, the other one if the part is serial controlled, and the last one if the part is neither lot nor serial controlled. And that would be the, the finished good part that I'm talking about. So you know we're putting the labels off that it would come out. It also automatically multiplies the quantity of those labels times the quantity received. So if, um, I, if I had a serial controlled part here and I told it a quantity of 10, it would have shot off 10 labels using the serial number for the template. All right, that is the uh, single issue, uh, uh, or single screen uh, uh, material issue and job receipt program.